Some of you don't trust we're acting in good faith. That's the problem I want to focus on solving. How do services like Twitter earn your trust? And thank you members of the Commerce Committee for the opportunity to speak with the American people about Twitter and Section 230. My remarks will be brief so we can get to questions. Section 230 is the most important law protecting internet speech. And removing Section 230 will remove speech from the internet. Section 230 gave internet services two important tools. The first provides immunity from liability for users' content. The second provides Good Samaritan protections for content moderation and removal, even of constitutionally protected speech, as long as it's done in good faith. That concept of good faith is what's being challenged by many of you today. Some of you don't trust we're acting in good faith. That's the problem I want to focus on solving. How do services like Twitter earn your trust? How do we ensure more choice in the market if we don't? There are three solutions we'd like to propose to address the concerns raised, all focused on services that decide to moderate or remove content. They could be expansions to Section 230, new legislative frameworks, or commitment to industry-wide self-regulation best practices. The first is requiring a services moderation process to be published. How are cases reported and reviewed? How are decisions made? What tools are used to enforce? Publishing answers to questions like these will make our process more robust and accountable to the people we serve. The second is requiring a straightforward process to appeal decisions made by humans or by algorithms. This ensures people can let us know when we don't get it right so that we can fix any mistakes and make our processes better in the future. And finally, much of the content people see today is determined by algorithms with very little visibility into how they choose what they show. We took a first step in making this more transparent by building a button to turn off our home timeline algorithms. It's a good start, but we're inspired by the market approach suggested by Dr. Stephen Wolfram before this committee in June 2019, enabling people to choose algorithms created by third parties to rank and filter their content is an incredibly energizing idea that's in reach. Requiring one, moderation process and practices to be published, two, a straightforward process to appeal decisions, and three, best efforts around algorithmic choice are suggestions to address the concerns we all have going forward. And they're all achievable in short order. It's critical as we consider these solutions, we optimize for new startups and independent developers. Doing so ensures a level playing field that increases the probability of competing ideas to help solve problems. We mustn't entrench the largest companies any further. Thank you for the time, and I look forward to a productive discussion to dig into these and other ideas. The three witnesses we have before this committee today collectively pose, I believe, the single greatest threat to free speech in America and the greatest threat we have to free and fair elections. But today, I want to focus my questioning on Mr. Dorsey and on Twitter. Because of the three players before us, I think Twitter's conduct has by far been the most egregious. Mr. Dorsey, does Twitter have the ability to influence elections? No. You don't believe Twitter has any ability to influence elections? No, we are one part of a broad spectrum of communication channels that people have. So you're testifying to this committee right now that, that, that Twitter, when it silences people, when it censors people, when it blocks political speech, that has no impact on elections? People, people have choice of other communication channels with which... Not if, not if they don't hear information. If you don't think you have the power to influence elections, why do you block anything? Uh, well, we have policies that are focused on making sure that more voices on the platform are possible. We see a lot of abuse and harassment, which ends up silencing people and having them leave from the platform. Why did Twitter make the decision to censor the New York Post? Uh, we had a hack materials policy. Um, that we when was that policy on. adopted? Uh, in 2018, I believe. In 2018, go ahead. What was, what, what was the policy? So the policy is around um, limiting the spread of materials uh, that are hacked. 
Um, we didn't want Twitter to be a distributor for hack materials. Um, we found that the New York Post, because it showed the direct materials, screenshots of the direct materials, and it was unclear how those were attained, that it felt that it fell under this policy. Now, we, so in your view, if it's unclear the source of, uh, of a document, and in this instance, the New York Post documented what it said the source was, which it said it was a, uh, a laptop owned by Hunter Biden that had been turned into a re re repair store. So they weren't hiding what they claimed to be the source. Is it, Are, is it your position that Twitter, when you can't tell the source, blocks, blocks press stories? No, not at all. Um, we, our, our team made a fast decision. Uh, the enforcement action, however, of blocking URLs, both in tweets and uh, in DM, in direct messages, we believe was incorrect. And we changed it. Today, right hours. now, the New York Post is still blocked from tweeting two weeks later. Yes, they have to log into their account, which they can do at this minute, delete the original tweet, which fell under our original enforcement actions, and they can tweet the exact same material and the exact same article, and it would go through. And so, Mr. Dorsey, your ability is you have the power to force a media outlet. Let's be clear. The New York Post isn't just some random guy tweeting. The New York Post has the fourth highest circulation of any newspaper in America. The New York Post is over 200 years old. The New York Post was founded by Alexander Hamilton. And your position is that, that you can sit in Silicon Valley and demand of the media that you can tell them what stories they can publish and you can tell the American people what reporting they can hear. Is that right? No, uh, this was this was a, you know, every person, every account, uh, every uh, organization that signs up to Twitter agrees to a terms of service. Uh, terms of service. Is so media public. outlets must genuflect and obey your dictates if they wish to be able to communicate with readers. Is that right? No, not at all. We, you know, we, we recognize an error in this policy and specifically the enforcement. Did Twitter block the distribution of the New York Times' story a few weeks ago that purported to be based on copies of President Trump's tax returns? We didn't find that a violation of our terms of service and this policy in particular because it was reporting about the material. It wasn't distributing okay. the material. Okay, well, that's actually not true. They, they posted what they purported to be original source materials and federal law, federal statute makes it a crime, a federal felony to distribute someone's tax returns against their knowledge. So that material was based on something that was distributed in violation of federal law. And yet Twitter gleefully allowed people to circulate that. But when the article was critical of Joe Biden, Twitter engaged in rampant uh, censorship and silencing. And again, we recognized errors in that policy. We we changed it within 24 hours. This is this but is. But you're still the blocking the New York Post. You haven't changed it. We have changed it. They can log into their account, delete the original tweet. Uh, that was you forced the Politico reporter to take down his post about the New York Post as well. Is that correct? Within that 24-hour period, yes. But we, you know, as the policy has changed. Anyone can tweet. So the Twitter takes the view. You can censor the New York Post. You can censor Politico. Presumably, you can censor the New York Times or any other media outlet. Mr. Dorsey, who the hell elected you and put you in charge of what the media are allowed to report and what the American people are allowed to hear? And why do you persist in behaving as a Democratic super PAC, silencing views to the contrary of your political belief? We're not doing that. Uh, and this is why I opened um, this hearing with calls for more transparency. We realize we need to earn trust more. We realize that more accountability is needed to show our intentions and to show the outcomes. Thank um, you, so I, I hear the concerns and acknowledge them, but we want to we fix it with more transparency. Mr. Dorsey, how does a claim by Chinese communists that the U.S. military is to blame for COVID remain up for two months without a fact check? and the president's tweet about security of mail-in ballots get labeled instantly. As you mentioned, we did label that tweet. Um, as we think about enforcement, we consider severity of offline, of potential offline harm, um, and we act as quickly as we can. Uh, we have taken action uh, against tweets from world leaders all around the world, um, including um, the president, 
And we did uh, take action on that tweet uh, because we saw it. Uh, we saw the confusion uh, it might uh, encourage and we labeled it accordingly. And the you're, goal you're with speaking, our labeling- You're speaking of the president's tweet. Yes. Okay. The goal of our labeling is to provide more context, to connect the dots uh, so that people can have more information so they can make decisions for themselves. Um, we, you know, we, we've created these policies recently. Um, we are enforcing them. Um, there are certainly uh, things that um, we can do much faster, but generally um, we believe that the policy was enforced in a timely manner and uh, in the right regard. And, and, and yet uh, you uh, seem to have no objection to um, a tweet by the Chinese Communist Party saying the U.S. Army brought the epidemic to Wuhan. Well, we did, and we, we labeled that tweet. Um, it, it providing, took you, providing took you more too much to do so, is that correct? I'm not sure of the exact time frame, but we can get back to you on that. We believe it's important for everyone to hear from global leaders. Um, and we have uh, policies around world leaders. Um, we want to make sure that um, we are respecting um, their right to speak uh, and, and to uh, publish what they need. But if there is a violation of our terms of service, uh, we want to label it. Mr. Dorsey, do you believe that the Holocaust really happened, yes or no? Yes. So you would agree that someone who says the Holocaust may not have happened is spreading misinformation, yes or no? Uh, yes. I appreciate your answers on this, but they surprise me and probably a lot of other Coloradans and Americans. After all, Iran's Ayatollah has done exactly this questioning the Holocaust, and yet his tweets remain unflagged on Twitter's platform. Uh, can you name any other instance of Twitter hiding or deleting a tweet from heads of state? Uh, not, not off the top of my head, but we have many uh, examples across world leaders around the world. Would you be willing to provide a, a list of those? Absolutely. It's strange to me that you've flagged the tweets from the president but haven't hidden the Ayatollah's tweets on Holocaust denial or calls to wipe Israel off the map. Does Twitter maintain a formal list of certain accounts that you actively monitor for misinformation? No, and we don't have a policy against misinformation. We have a policy against misinformation in three categories, which are manipulated media, uh, public health, specifically COVID, and civic integrity, election, in election interference, and voter suppression. That is all we have policy on for misleading information. Uh, we do not have policy or enforcement for any other types of misleading information that you're mentioning. So somebody denying the murder of millions of people uh, or instigating violence against a country as a head of state is not uh, categorically falling in any of those three misinformation or other categories Twitter has? Not misinformation, but we do have other policies around incitement to violence. Uh, which, which may, um, some, some of the tweets that you mentioned or the examples that you're mentioning uh, may fall afoul of. Um, but for misleading information, uh, we're focused on those three categories only. For about a hundred years, <clears throat> foreign sources have been trying to influence U.S. policy and U.S. elections. Now they're onto your platforms. They see this as a way to get access to the American people. So given your refusal to censor or ban foreign dictators while regularly censoring the president, aren't you at this very moment personally responsible for flooding the nation with foreign disinformation? Just to be clear, we, we have not censored the president. We have not um, taken the tweets down that you're referencing. Um, they have more context and a label uh, applied to them. And we do the same for leaders around the world. Do the Russian government and other foreign nations continue to attempt to use your company's platforms to spread this information and influence the 2020 election? Can you briefly describe what you are seeing? We do continue to see um, interference. Um, we recently disclosed actions we took on both uh, Russia and um, actions originating out of Iran. Um, we made those disclosures public um, we can, you know, share those with, with your team. Um, but this remains, as you've heard from others uh, in, on the panel, and as Mark has detailed, um, one of our highest priorities uh, and something we want to make sure that we are focused on 
uh, eliminating as much uh, platform manipulation as possible. Would you say that the political ideology of the employees in your com company is, you know, let's say 50-50, conservative versus uh, uh, liberal progressive, or do you think it's closer to 90% liberal, 10% conservative? We'll start with uh, Mr. Dorsey. Um, as you mentioned, I don't know the, the makeup of our employees because it's not something we ask or, or focus on. I mean, be, I mean, just just what, what do you think off top of your head based on your chat rooms and kind of the people you talk to? Not, not something I look for or look yeah, right. at. The question was, does Twitter have the ability to influence elections? And you said no. Do you, do you still stand by that, that, uh, Twitter, that answer? Twitter, Twitter as a company, no. no we you, don't, you don't think you have the ability by, by moderation policies? By as Senator Lee would call, and I would call it censoring, you know, what you do with the New York Post. You, you don't think that censorship, that moderation of policies, you don't think that influences the elections by withholding what I believe is true information from the American public? You don't think that interferes in elections? Not, not our current moderation policies. Our current moderation policies are to protect the conversation and the integrity of the conversation around the elections. Okay, for both Mr. Zuckerberg and Dorsey, who, who censored, censored the New York Post stories or throttled them back, do either one of you have any evidence that the New York Post story is part of Russian disinformation or that those emails aren't authentic? Do any of you have any, any information whatsoever that they're not authentic or that they are Russian disinformation? We Mr. Don't. Dorsey? We, we don't. You have no, so so why would why would you censor it? Why did you prevent that from being disseminated on your platform that is supposed to be for the free expression of ideas and particularly true ideas? We believed it fell afoul of our hacking materials policy. Uh, we judged in the well, moment. What evidence did you have that it was hacked? They they weren't hacked. We we judged in a moment that it looked like it was hacked materials. You were wrong. Surfacing, and and we updated our policy and our enforcement within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a tweet that was put up on, on uh, Twitter. It says, Senator Ron Johnson is my neighbor and strangled our dog buttons right in front of my four-year-old son and three-year-old daughter. The police refuse to investigate. This is a complete lie, but important to retweet and note that there are more of my lies to come. Now, we, we contacted Twitter and we, we asked him to take it down. And here's the response. Thanks for reaching out. We escalated this to our support team for their review, and they have determined that this is not a violation of our policies. That tweet was was retweeted like something like seventeen thousand times, and viewed by over and loved, commented, you know, appreciated by over fifty thousand people. How is that not voter suppression? How is that not election interference? How does that not that not affect the civic integrity? We'll, we'll have to look uh, into our enforcement um, or non enforcement in this case of the tweet, and we can get back to you with more context. So, Mr. M Mr. Zuckerberg, in, in that same June hearing, real quick, Mr. Dorsey, you referred to that June hearing with uh, Stefan Wolfgram had all kinds of good ideas. That's 16 months ago. Why haven't you inter why haven't you implemented any of those transparency ideas that you thought were pretty good 16 months ago? Well, he was talking about algorithmic choice, and we have implemented one of them, which is we allow people to turn off the ranking of our timeline. Uh, the, the rest is, is work, and it's going to take some time. 